listening to Rock Chalk Jayhawk with me, Jayhawk, a podcast brought to you by the Field of 68 Media Network. Make sure you rate five stars, review, and hit the subscribe button on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcast from. All right, our guest today was part of five Big 12 championships. He played in four Sweet 16s, two Elite Eights, and a Final Four. He's in the top 30 in all-time steals at KU. Welcome to the podcast, Miss, Mr. Silky Smooth, fellow Kansas City native, Travis Relliford. Hey, yeah. appreciate hey. coming to the podcast. How you been, man? Thanks. I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, man. So, uh, so go ahead and fill in uh, Jayhawk Nation. What's going on with Travis Relliford today? What's man, going on with you doing that? I'm, I'm, I'm in transition into doing something else in life. I, uh, I, uh, I, I would say I retired this year. I'm done playing ball. I still got it. I still can go out there and give some buckets and, and lock a few people up if I had to. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm transitioning to uh, medical medical uh, device sales. Okay. I'm uh, in training right now, so nice. we'll see how that go. Well, that's awesome, man. Um, we already know, man, obviously with, with uh, you know, the type of great person you are, great ambassador, you're a great ambassador for KU, man. Obviously, we know with your work ethic uh, that you're going to obviously do great things in that, in that medical thank field, you. and uh, we definitely wish you the best of luck. And we definitely know. I know you're in shape, man. I know. I know you can still get buckets. I know you can. Hey, I know you still got the bounce and everything, huh? Yeah, all still do, man. Like uh, up until last year, I was still doing between the legs, all that, you know. So, yeah, I, I still, I still got it. Hey, so all right, we 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 go we go hit on retirement, man. I'm off script a little bit. We're gonna hit on retirement. Right, let's so, do it. what made you come to that decision to say, hey? You know, a lot because a lot of guys play around with it. You know, they play around with it. Oh, I'm retired. The next you know, they got the shoes laced up. They still yeah. going back at it. What made you decide to say, hey, man, I'm done? Uh, well, like every real hooper, I got, I still got my kicks in my car. I still got a ball in my backseat. But, I mean, it, I, COVID, you know, COVID, it hit. And I've been playing over Europe for the past seven years. So, it's just one of those things I, I started to miss being home and, my yeah. kids are getting older. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that played a role, but I'm, I'm actually, like, I'm not even stressing about it. I, I'm, <laughs> I feel my body feel great. Uh, I, I enjoy it, actually, man. I am I picked up golfing. I mean, we went golfing, yeah, you know, a yeah, couple months yeah. ago. My golfing I'm a, I'm a lot, right here. I'm a lot better than I was when we played that time. I promise you that. Hey. But. Hey, I'm going to tell you guys this, Jayhawk Nation. You talk, <laughs> hey, y'all know how silky smooth, I said it in the intro, silky smooth. Y'all know how his game was on the basketball court. I'm telling you, man. Travis, hey, one of my favorite, one of my favorite golfers, obviously Tiger, man. I hope yeah, you Tiger gets you. Obviously with that news gets better. But one yeah, of my okay. favorite, Tiger, my obviously my favorite golfer of all time. But yeah. one guy I try to mimic my swing golf of, is Fred Couples just because it's so smooth and so, okay. so just so silky. There you I go. I can't do it. I mean, yeah. I, I try, but I saw you swing traps. I said, "Oh man, this dude, this he dude got, got it, huh? perfect swing." <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's perfect swing, but it's going way left <laughs> and right. You know, I got to I got to master how to get it straight, man. I'll, I'll be good. Hey, hey don't we all, man? Don't we all, man? But I think the biggest yeah. thing we just got to keep swinging that club, just That's like shooting the shot, man. You know. That's it. That's it. Hey, well, hey, well, let's let's dive in. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about this year's squad. You know, the Hawks were on this nice little hot streak coming off the last four games with mm -hmm. uh, a winning streak, and obviously this ran up against Texas last night. And there was about seven seven ways last night down the stretch that the Jayhawks could have won that game. And obviously we all know how that, that turned out. They end up losing it down the stretch, but what do you think the biggest, or what do you think are some of the things that uh, the players can do down the stretch in order to close out games late in the game? That's tough. I mean, they, they had a lot of opportunities just in yesterday's game, uh, a few open looks. Uh, so you can't like say they could do something different with that shots just didn't fall. I feel like uh, we had a lot of different opportunities with taking over the game, winning the game, and, you know. I, I would say, like, if they would do anything different, it would just be a little more tougher. But outside of that, these guys, these guys are – you can tell they're working. Man. You can tell that you can tell they're putting in the work. Ochai and all the, all the veteran guys are 
you, you can see the progress they, they've made over the years. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it. You mentioned it perfect, man. You can we can you can see the progress that they've been that they've uh, accumulated over these last four games, and even at, even at the Texas game, man, they had they they controlled the the whole game. Even they had that big lead starting out uh, sure. again, obviously down the stretch. Uh, you know, kind of things went a little bit south. But you mentioned toughness as well too. Toughness yeah. as well too, and you know something that's that Coach Self is obviously gonna. Uh, you know, preach on, on on those guys and making sure they're tough. But that was a that was a game that you know they easily had controlled and lost. And I'm oh, you know, sure. no coach self, you know, obviously is not happy with with losing games like that. And he's obviously going to get back to the drawing board and make adjustments. But yeah. from watching that game, it because when they played Texas at home, Travis, we all know that Texas. Yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah, that was that was a nice little ass whooping, but it it, it happens, you know, but. They bounced back. I felt like yeah, overall they, they played well, you know, just a few plays would have went our way. Yeah. Uh, I think it would have been a different outcome. But I feel like if they if they were just a little bit more tougher, then, I mean, we, we would be having a different conversation right now. For sure, for sure. And, and you know, that's one thing that Coach Self, like you said, he is so big on, on, on toughness. And, you yeah. know, uh, their coaching staff are really – I just hope they don't got to bring out no uh, no helmets and football pads. But I don't think they're at that, at that point this season right now, obviously yeah. late in the season. Because um, they're – I, I still think they got great momentum coming against this sure. very, tough, sure. very tough Baylor team. Yeah. So, hey, so check this out, Tra uh, Travis. That game last night went into overtime. It was Coach Self's first loss in overtime since 2017. What do you think makes Coach Self so great in those get, uh, excuse me, close game situations? He's consistent. Like that's yeah. that's one of the biggest things. I mean, I can, you can go on about him X's and O's and his his strategy going into the game, but I, I think he's consistent on like how he how he coaches the player, how he approaches the player. Like he played, so he he's a yeah. player's coach. So it makes it easy when you're playing for a guy that knows what situation you're in or. Can, or can kind of relate. So, yeah, I mean, that that all helps. You're right, man. And again, echoing off of what you said, I think that's what has made Coach Self uh, the kind of strong coach that he is. Like you mentioned, yeah. consistency. You know, yeah. I mean, I look at it from a standpoint when I was playing there, geez, almost 18 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> it's just Coach tough Self, to talk you know, about. 18, yeah. 15, anywhere between 15, 18 years. Uh -huh. um, so I got three years under him, and, you know, Back then, great, yeah. great in uh, late game situations, and obviously yeah. uh, he kept building up. And like you mentioned, the consistency in that. So, yeah. In overtime, we really, we really could have used someone to that has the ability to create their own shot. For sure. I've talked to a lot of guys on the pod, you know, and asked them the same kind of similar question: Who do you think on this team has the ability to do that? Be that guy that can create their shot. Who do you think that guy is? I would say the the two I would say I, I mean I'm a big fan of Ochai. He's from Kansas City. He's, yeah. He he works his butt off, you know. But yeah. I would say probably Garrett and Wilson, man. Those are the two guys that I feel like down the stretch that they should just be able to put their head down, get to the basket if they need yeah. to, and you know make a shot because they they've shown that they can do that. You know, it just the uh, not being consistent thing is that yeah. that's what hurts. I think that in the I most think, you know. Like you mentioned, I think you know if they can find that if they can find that guy down the stretch uh, to be able to close out and get them a bucket, and to be honest, to be able to get to get a bucket, and this is no hype, you know, trying yeah. to make two. Yeah. I mean, at any point in time, man, we already knew there's nobody stopping you. If somebody's stopping you from getting to the paint, Travis, that means you're in right in your comfort zone to get that uh, mid range jumper. Exactly. And that, and that, exactly. You only normally took the mid range jumper because that's what you wanted to do, not because somebody stopped you. Yeah, so no, fact. If if I feel like if if we can if one if, if somebody can step up and have that kind of that that tenacity that toughness like you, because you remind me of a guy just be able to slash and get to the rim. You remind me of like a Keith Langford. Like okay. you two, both of you guys, it was no stopping getting you guys getting stopping you guys getting to the rim. Uh, yeah. with both of you guys. You guys get yeah. to wherever you guys wanted to on the court. But I think mm -hmm. if they could have that guy that could just get their shot off at any point in time, that would definitely help them out for sure. Oh, yeah. It would help a lot, man. It will open, open up more for CB, you know, because he's yeah. shooting. I mean, like, it opened up a lot. But if we just had one guy that, that can step up and do that, 
I yeah. mean, I feel like we'll be we'll be on a good path. But so far, I like what I saw yesterday. These yeah. guys got momentum going into Baylor. I mean, who knows? We probably can upset those guys. They yeah. So you know what? You know, uh, you know, you know, Jeff Goodman and I were talking a little bit earlier. You know, we're talking about Baylor and. You know, this could be a game. This could be a game for 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 Kansas for sure. Obviously, Baylor comes sure, out with a sure. three week quarantine. Uh, they just had a tough one against Iowa State. Uh, so I think mm-hmm. this is a good place. And obviously, with the way the Jayhawks have been playing the last five games, uh, I think this is going to be a, a really good game. And obviously, being on Senior Night too, um, yeah, you, you, you yeah. played in Senior Nights. Talk about talk about uh, the preparation Coach Self's put puts into practice and uh, the message he sends to the players about making sure uh, letting the seniors go out in style. Oh, he's, I mean, I've never been to any other places, but yeah. I would say if I could see any other place, he's probably the best at it. I mean, yeah. like he, he, he got a nice little setup. I mean, I wish I hate to see it, but I wish that these guys can play in front of like a packed yeah. arena yeah. to go out with, 16 plus thousand fans in there and just just go all out man i mean like i can't express how much like how much fun that is yeah uh, the atmosphere is <laughs> like you, yeah you get the goosebumps i'm getting it down just talking about it <laughs> hey bro uh, no lie. No but lie. yeah I'm you know so like stuff. so I, I feel for these kids and i'm like I, i'm you know i'm ku ride or die you know like yes, so I, I can't express any more words other than yeah. this guy. He, he knows what he's doing. Like that. Look at the record. Look at the numbers. Hey, so check this out. I got a, I got a question for you, Travis. Obviously, with COVID and not having fans, like I don't even know. I don't probably don't even know the answer to this. How would you, if you, if you were playing in a time like this, how would you mentally try to prepare yourself for the game? Because you know the advantage. When it when you step into the field house, sixteen thousand three hundred. Even even when you go on an away game, if it's not sixteen thousand, yeah. it's still a full house. It's still oh, a full for house. Sure. For sure, for sure. I mean, to be, I, I don't even know, bro. Like I've only <laughs> known that place to be packed to the roof. You know, like I can't imagine what these kids are going to. So that's what I'm saying. I'm giving more credit to these guys yeah, for even for sure. being able to go out there and do what they're doing. Still at, I, I would say, still at a high level and still yeah. compete. And, and most of the part, they're in every game other yeah. than that, that, that blowout game we had. And, like, yeah, we had fans. I, I would think it would be a different season oh, yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. And you know and how I much. That goes, yeah. I, and, and not just speaking for Kansas, I, mean, I think that goes for a lot of the blue buzz. Yeah, you know, like for Duke, sure. North Carolina's, Kentucky. For sure. For sure. Uh, Michigan State's, a lot of those guys, man, you know. Um, they rely heavily off that that crowd energy because the crowds, they just get so amped up and ready for those games because those are winning tradition programs. So, right. hey, but uh, Ochai, let's talk a little bit about Ochai. Ochai, uh, my guy. <laughs> yeah, that's your that's your guy. Ochai was on my fire guy. last night from three. Yeah, uh, man, I like to see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think do you think he's our best option to carry the team behind the arc for the rest of the season? I know you mentioned CB spotting up and shooting, but yeah, those two, those two for sure. that knockdown three pointer when he shoots, and you know it's good. Those two for sure. Like yeah, I, I mean, I'll I'll put my money on either one of them to take take the last shot, you yeah. know. But uh, as far as having that guy to just go in there and get a bucket, I mean, Wilson has shown that, you know, yeah. like he he's shown yeah. it from the outside and be able to go get to the basket and get a bucket. Ochai can do it. He hasn't shown him much. He's been shooting a lot this year, which is okay because he's shooting at a high rate. But, I, I mean, you any one of those three guys. And then you yeah. can't leave Garrett out with the, with the experience that he has, you know, the confidence that he has, the coach self has given him. And that's another thing a lot of people don't understand. Like, the, the more you're in the program, the more confidence is given to you, the more, yeah. like – the longer your leash is, you know, like yeah, and yeah. as a player, you can be yourself. And I yeah. feel like Ojai is there, but he I don't think he understand how long like his his leash yeah. is to just go out there and just get it done, you know? Like, yeah. You know, he came off yeah, Ojai gotta understand, you know, he came off that red shirt year. Yeah. They they, they hey. Hey, we got to, oh, child, we got to cut your red shirt. We need you. Yeah, you're the man. And prove shot the world. So, right there, you're oh, thinking that, sure. like, man, your leash is long, right? And you can. Yeah, no. And you know, you mentioned it best, Travis, too. Um, 
with, I mean, I know you mentioned uh, Jalen and Marcus being those guys that can, hey, be able to create, get their own shot. But I think Ochai, like you mentioned, I think Ochai would be a great candidate to start developing that because sure. he can, I mean, he's very versatile and he can get, he can get to where he wants if he really wants to, if he just doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, really rely on that jump shot and really focuses on trying to create, trying to get those buckets because he's an athlete. Crazy. And then, like I said, like, I would say he would remind me of me, but way more athletic. Like, I, I could jump or no, but this guy is on another level. Like, I've, I've been able to practice with him for the past, like, couple of years up until this past season. So, yeah, I've got to witness it, you know, live. And, yeah, yeah I 100% I agree with you. He, I guess if he understand that, hey, this is this is your team, bro. Like, yeah. they, hey, run the show, take it over. Like, I think I think our team would be a lot different if, if he yeah. I guess understood that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know, hopefully, hopefully he'll continue to gain confidence. And you know, a, a lot of these guys right now, they're playing with unbelievable confidence. And hopefully, you know, that continues to to get better and you know allows him to say, sure. Hey, man, I gotta I gotta get in there and create as well, too. Um mm -hmm. So the biggest difference, and uh, talk still talking about the Texas game last night. The biggest difference in KU's play. And not just really last night, over the last, the course of games has been their defense, mm -hmm. especially the way they've been guarding the ball screens. Yeah. You are a great defender. Great yeah. defender. Uh -huh. All to, one of the all-time great defenders at, in, in KU history. What do you yeah. think, and Coach Self refers to that, or Coach Self refers to that a lot. What do you think the Hawks need to do to continue to guard like this for the rest of the season? Well, I mean, if he's telling them what he told me, like, get over the screen – as if you don't have any help, you know, like yes. so I'm running yes. over the screen, going under, like it got to a point to where I wasn't even expecting the help, you know, big to step up and yeah. head. You know, I wasn't, wasn't expecting that. I was just like, Hey, this is who I'm guarding. I'm gonna keep this guy in front of me. But so far, like you said, the last five games, I feel like these guys have, have picked it up a lot on the, on the defensive end. Uh, like, yeah. uh, they have many, you mentioned it, you mentioned it best, man. That, and that, that, that's funny, man. Cause that, that does sound just like, like Coach Self, you know, he's, yeah. big. Hey, whoever's guarding the ball, the other four guys in help need to be thinking this guy's going to get beat. And yeah. you know, when you guard and ball, you don't want to have that mindset. Cause you know, if you get beat under Coach Self, yeah, he's going to get off to you. So you, you got to have that strong mindset. Like, man, I'm getting over the screen. I ain't forcing over, nobody's over, helping when I'm guarding. Yeah. For sure. And, and, hey, but that's how you play. So, and, you know, you talked about the mind. And can you talk more a little bit about the mindset? Like, what does it take to dig down? Because not everybody defends, Travis. You know that. Anybody yeah, I don't, that, the thing is, I don't think that's anything you can teach. I mean, you can give guys the tools, strategies, the techniques, yeah. but you got to, like, want to. Like, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure if I was on the court, uh, it was some games I didn't score a lot or whatever. But I was making sure my guy didn't score more than me, you know, like, <laughs> ain't no way. So, and then when I always guarded the best guy on the opponent's team, my goal was to cut their average in half. Like, yeah. if I cut their average yeah. in half, then, hey, then they, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do to help our team, you know. So, and other guys on the team see that. They all play harder. And it just, it just, a, it's a domino effect, it, yeah. one after another. Hey, so Travis, I'm gonna go out on a limb real fast, man. Hey, so let's do it, let's do I know Co Self. I know Co Self has mentioned multiple times about you being one of the top defenders, and he's also said a little bit of something about me. But I'm just gonna say, <laughs> Travis, it just strange from the Kansas City area, man. I think so, man. I mean, we got, you know, we got it's a Kansas tough, City thing, man. We got a lot of tough guys here. That's why. Yeah. That's why all, all we need is all we need is Ocha to step up and put his own yeah. in his back, you know, because he got go, he got the to do it on both ends, you know, so. I think that'd be that'd be really dope if he if he can do that. And I again, I'm a huge fan. Have always been of all of those guys. And I know, like you said, with them playing defense the way they they have, even with CB being a a Kansas a Kansas kid as well too, um, uh, kind of Kansas City kid. Hopefully, both of these guys continue to keep blocking up that so so they can come join us in in the, uh, the exactly defensive <laughs> club. We're gonna call it the defensive club. Hey. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. <laughs> hey, so you play multiple multiple positions while at KU. I mean, Coach Self mentioned multiple times again when we're talking defense, multiple times. Travis Relaford is a guy that can guard one through five, and you had to. You had to guard oh, one through five at some point yeah. in time. 
So uh-huh. does Jalen Wilson's game remind you a little bit of yourself? Because he's the guy that can guard one through five as well, too. Yeah, I mean, he has the capability of doing that easily. No no problem. Uh, I think, again, it's uh, with the confidence. If he realized, like, bro, you are out there. Like, we yeah. need you out there. Like, you can't make mistakes other than not working hard. Like, True. you do everything that this guy on the coach yeah. self asks you to do, then, then you should be fine. But, yeah, I think he has the potential to be even better. Like, especially because yeah. he's starting off at a younger age offensively. Yeah ahead of me at, as, as freshman. So the sky's the limit for that guy. Yeah. And a lot of people, too, got to factor in, you know, this is really his – this is really Jalen's, like, freshman year. This is first year playing yeah, yeah, for sure. out last year. But obviously, you know, mm-hmm. according to Coach Self, once you get in the Big 12 play, freshmen become sophomores, sophomores become juniors. I don't know. What are seniors? <laughs> I don't know, old guy, old head. Oh, that's, God. What, that's what I was called for my last two year old. Well, old hey, he always head. stopped at the seniors, man. It was like juniors or seniors, sophomores yeah. or juniors. I'm like, man, what, what, what and then old head. head. That's it. Old it's head, old head. <laughs> hey, so that's it. So they got a big test coming up this Saturday against Baylor. Obviously, mm-hmm. we just mentioned a little bit, but what do you think? Like, what do you think your key to the game would be for the Hawks to to pull off the upset? I think they're just going to match like beginning of what we talked about, their toughness, man. If they yeah. can if they can match Baylor's toughness, I, I think they can compete. I, I watched Baylor play several times. They're a really good team, really athletic, can shoot the ball, lights out. But I think their toughness give them that edge over most teams they play against. Yeah. Because those guys are some scrappy guys. You, I yeah. mean, I mean, you've seen them play. So I think if no we can match not that. Not no Baylor team we used to play in, huh? That 2-3 zone. I know, I know. Like, <laughs> they, had, they had a few guys on the team back in the day, but not overall <laughs> like the team they have now. You know, so. But, yeah, I think if we match their toughness, we, yeah. we'll, we'll have a good chance at, at competing and having a chance of winning the game. Yeah. And so, I mean, again, we mentioned a little bit earlier, it'll be senior night uh, on Saturday. So do you think Marcus or Mitch – should take advantage of the extra year of eligibility that the NCAA, the NCAA is offering? Ah, that depends on if, if they got any, you know, NBA opportunities. If if the door's open there, then yeah, I would say go for it. But I can tell you yeah. for a fact, knowing what I know, like I, if I could stay another year in college and do it all over again, I'll, I'll give it another year. Why not? Yeah. You know, like if you go, you go make it to the next level, you're going to make it, you know, like yeah. for sure. we'll see. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I'm kind of I'm kind of in that same boat with you, man. Like, shoot, you give me another year, man. Hey, you know, man, hey, you a dad right now, Travis. You just talked about you in the medical field. You gotta pay bills. I'll take that all day, man. No responsibility again. Easy, for you. None. You could show up, go to practice for like 10 hours, but uh yeah, and then play in front of 16,000 whenever they have that again. But yeah, yeah no, sure. no complaints about that. Yeah. Hey, so we haven't seen a game in a while where Ocha, Christian, and Jalen were all hitting from beyond the arc. If that starts to happen, Travis, and they all get hot, what do you think this team ceiling can get? The they will be able to compete with anyone. I, yeah. I would think I, I would think that. Like what you're just saying, all three of them playing well, we haven't seen that all year, you know? So I think that they will be able to play with anybody in the country if all three of them like clicked at the same time, which I feel like they're, they're getting yeah. close. Yeah. And you know, I mean, think about, I mean, even when they played Gonzaga early on, I mean, that was, yeah. that was a very high scoring game, but it was still close yep. down the stretch. And, you know, we all know mm-hmm. how good Gonzaga is and don't get me wrong. I don't think any team is what they were at the start of season than where they are now. Every team's getting better, yeah. but that just kind of showed where they were then, and obviously we took a little dip, and now we're kind of finding our mojo back. And if all guys, like you said, are hitting, man, that's a scary team. That's if scary. they continue that's to play good. defense the way they've been playing. Oh, for sure, hands down, man. Like I, all three of those guys playing the yeah. way they play, like yeah. it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be fair. We will be talking about like, all right, well, how far are these guys are. I mean, if we're gonna make it to the final four, or win it. Like that's the conversation we will be having. But yeah. again, if they, if they stay with this momentum they have right now, I mean, I'm I'm confident. If yeah. if two of them, if two of them click, then we'll be yeah. fine. You know, like they, they don't even have they to be. Wait for that special time for all three to get hot. 
Yeah, I mean, all three, yeah, lights out. But if just two of them get on on a little high streak, then yeah. I think that'll lift our team. Everybody else will, I think, play a lot better too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hey, so obviously you played basketball. Kansas City kid played at Bishop Meage. Was they having a really great season this year? Have you followed them this year? No, I haven't been able to keep up with them. Are, yeah, they're, 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 they're having a really – they're having a heck of a year. Uh, I believe they're either undefeated or they've only lost one game. But they're having a – actually, I think they're undefeated. They're undefeated this year. Okay. But they're All having, right, they're having another strong year. But do people – hey, I want to know your thoughts. Do people under – do you think people underestimate how good Kansas City high school hoops are? I think do so. You think, do you think we're starting to get a little bit more respect? No, I think I don't think we will get as much respect as we deserve. But yeah. I, I feel like we've we've always had the talent, especially at like five A, six A level of competition. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, like I don't know how we can change that. Like I don't know who, who who's over all of that. But I wouldn't I wouldn't underestimate the talent in Kansas City at all. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Me neither. <laughs> hey, I mean, so, yeah. hey, so, <laughs> hey, so growing up, uh, Travis, were you a Jayhawk fan? Were you like, man, I'm a huge Jayhawk fan? Or what was, I mean, were you a Jayhawk fan growing up? Yeah, I, w- I would say I was. I wasn't like okay. huge. I don't want to break anybody's heart, but I wasn't like huge because I, I played football as a kid growing up and that was one of yeah. my like passions. And then as I got, uh, as I got, older and I broke both of my collarbones I decided to stick with basketball and then that's I wouldn't say by high school seventh eighth grade I started really focusing on colleges and like oh, yeah. okay I like this college I would like to go play there I like to go play here yeah and then by high school I was I was it was set in stone that KU is where I want to be and, and hey you know the story after that yes sir hey well I, I guarantee you this Travis there, there's definitely no need to apologize for not for not probably being the hugest Jayhawk fan before you came there, because I guarantee you Jayhawk Nation doesn't care if you were a fan before. <laughs> They're just glad that you came to the school. Yeah. Because I, I, both of my parents were from Oklahoma. So yeah. there wasn't no KU games coming on in the house like, hey, let's huddle around around the TV. Yeah, yeah, I just started watching them in 91. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have that either in my house, like watching specific colleges or anything like that. We were more of just the Chiefs because I grew yeah, up yeah. 10 minutes from the stadium. So, I mean, it was all about football. Football was yeah. life. You know, and then yeah. I got a little taller and got a little, little more skilled. And I was like, okay, let me go ahead and try this basketball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, hey, I, I guarantee you Jayhawk Nation is definitely glad that yeah. uh, that you definitely made that decision. To come oh, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I made it too, man. Like, yeah, me life too, great, man. Me man. too. Me too for you and me too, me too for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it makes sense for any guy. If I mean, if you're watching, like if you're the guy in the city and you have an opportunity to go play at Kansas, like yeah. n- not only your four years at Kansas is going to be it. Like you got this for the rest of your life. Like you're going to be the local guy to this day. Like I'm, I'm still opportunities after opportunities. I'm like, yeah. slow down. Now let me figure out what I want to do first. You know, yeah. like, but <laughs> I mean, and that's that's the advantage right. of being a local guy going to a school like that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change it at all. Same. I, I'm I'm right there with you. Other man. than Coach Self playing me early on. <laughs> uh, other than Coach Self playing me early in my career, but <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. So. Hey, well, hey, well, obviously we know you made the decision about to come it. to KU, but. What truly made you to come play for Coach Self at KU? Well, I mean, I noticed, like, this guy is a player coach. Uh, B. Rush grew up in the city where I grew up from, so I was really tight to him. And uh, I would say I looked up to him. And Keith Langford I was a huge fan of. And I'm just like, yeah. some of these two guys. And another guy, J.R. Giddens, before he he left, yeah. those, those three guys were all pretty much, like, my position or whatever I, w- I would like to say. I, I like all their games. I'm like, man, I want to, you know, do what they're doing. Put That's on awesome. this jersey and be a KU and being able to carry the team like they have, you know. So that, that those guys wanting to be where they were. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, Travis. So yeah. obviously, you know, you took that red shirt year, your freshman year. How do you think that year of practicing year. improved your game? 
Uh, I felt like I got a lot stronger, more confident. And I think that was the key to my game early on as far as, like, making shots. You know, I, I going into college, I was a I was a scorer. I was a bucket. That was yeah. the only reason why KU recruited me. They didn't recruit me to play defense. They knew I could. And yeah. then once I got there, I had to figure out my niche on how to stay on the court, play more. So I'm like, okay, like, I know I can play defense. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not going to let my guy score me. It's simple, right? And uh, so once I got that and got some more confidence as as I got older, my junior senior year, I'm knocking down threes consistently and, you know, helping the team, leading the team and scoring it at some yeah. point of, of yeah. the season, you know. So yeah. I, I feel like the biggest thing was my, my confidence sitting out that year, being able to build that as a player. Yeah. So, hey, hey, uh, Travis, man, hey, that's, that's, that's definitely a great story because obviously I red shirted too and – uh, mentally, talk about mentally, you know, knowing when you had to sit out that full year mentally, how did you keep yourself mentally tough through that time? It was tough. I'm not even gonna lie. Like my first, like going into coach self office, like I, I didn't know how I would, how that conversation would go, how it would end going in there. I had no idea, but the first, like few months of the season of just practicing I'm like oh this is pointless you know I'm young you know didn't care I just want to be out there hooping <laughs> and as I started to see the results I'm like okay like this is this this has helped me you know like I my last I want to say three years I barely came off the court you know and yeah. so it, just like, it, it paid off for me at least Hey, so again, hey, Travis, you know, I mentioned early in the, the intro, silky smooth, even with your golf swing, silky smooth. Hey, so hey, one thing about you, Travis, and I know Coach Self, because they said it before, like it used to piss him off because it looked like you weren't trying, but you know, it looked like you were never going hard, but uh -huh. you were going hard because I've guarded you before. I've guarded you before and it's like, well, let me guard this dude. It don't look like he going hard at all. That's just his game. This yeah. dude, it, he makes it look so easy yeah. to where it looks like he's not going hard. So yeah. talk about talk about that part of your game. Was that something that was just like that's how you played when you were a younger kid? Like was that just that that was just kind of your whole mindset of playing? I mean, not mindset, but kind of your characteristics of playing. Because I know you got a lot of people off that dribble because they're like, oh no, nah, he ain't going hard. Yeah, <laughs> me, <bro. laughs> Yeah, I feel like as a kid, I've always been like a guy trying to get to the basket because I, you know, when you when you're young, you're not strong enough to shoot. So yeah. I was all, once I realized I was bigger, quicker, more athletic, I wanted to get to the basket. So I mean, luring guys to sleep and making them think that oh, he's not like you said, <laughs> oh, he's not that fast. Oh, probably do some, <laughs> probably do some slow or whatever, slow down and then like you know take off on you. But, hey, you want to do yeah, it up for changing that, pace, uh, yeah. pace of speed, man. Exactly. That's it. That's <laughs> it. I wasn't, I wasn't, you'd be thinking it's sweet, and then I'm right at the rim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right when they like, oh, man, he ain't going to the rim. Let me relax. Oh, dang, he yeah. gone. Dang. Done. That's Travis for you right there. Back on, back hey, on so, obviously, you play tons of games in the field house with 16, 300. Is there a favorite game that sticks out to you? Come on now. You know, the last Mizzou game we played. Were you, were you there for that? Oh, yes, sir. Goodness. Craziest hey, game I don't ever. think anything's going to top that, man. Cra craziest game ever. I mean, outside of playing in a national championship. Outside of playing hey, in a I'm national just... championship in yeah. front of all of those fans. But yeah. atmosphere, uh, uh, meaning behind the game, like the, the fan base. Yes. The rivalry, you go down the list, you know, like guys that played on Mizzou or from Kansas City. So I had, you know, I had to one up them. So it just, man. It, and then they had beat us at their place that, that season, that yep. year too. Um, off of like a buzzer beater or something like that. I mm -hmm. think Marcus had, had hit it. And so we had already had that. And then being down 18 points yes. or going into yes. half, it was just like, you can't, you can't script it up any better than that. Hey, man, I, I remember that game. Like I remember exact to the T because I'm I remember the couch we had we don't got it no more it's gone but I still yeah. remember the couch I was sitting on because I, I had a I had a little uh a young a little young kid man that we were coaching his little yeah. uh, ninth grader at the time and he uh -huh. was a Missouri fan hey yeah. 
Travis, he was on my head. Hey, oh, I bet. I on bet. my head. Hey, y'all done. Down 18, y'all done. It's yeah. over. Hey, you know, hey, I'm just sitting here like, I can't reply back. I'm just like, yeah, hey, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I just stopped saying anything back. And then y'all start going on that run. Yeah. And, all I did and was again, the, the question fans, mark. Having, having those fans helped, though. Like, I can't imagine being yeah. down 18 with no fans. We probably got beat by 40, you know, like, yeah. but the fans, we start making two or three uh, baskets, and, and the fans start, you know, getting a little louder, getting a little louder. We brought it within, like, two points, man. We couldn't even hear our own thoughts. You know, like. Yeah. Hey, because I've it, heard, Travis, I've heard from multiple people, whether it was players, coaches, uh, media guys that were at that game. Yeah. It's been said that is the loudest it's ever been. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine it being any louder in any other place. Like. I enjoy going to uh, K State Arena, kicking their butt in front of their crazy fans, but there's nothing like compared to that game, like yeah. at all, at all. I and I, I know I've played in some loud games, man, and I've been a part outside of playing basketball, going to some games. I'm like, man, that's loud. If there's one thing I could do, Travis, and and and, and go back into time, it'd be to go just sit in the stands. And be at that Missouri game just to be able to hear. I, I still, you know, I still, it gets, it's been loud. Yeah, I still remember going into halftime. We're like looking at each other, like we can't go out like this. Like there's no way. I'm talking to guys like, bro, there's no way we going out like this, and there's no way they're going to shoot that good the second half because those <laughs> guys could miss. And you get again, we made one play after another, yeah. getting stops, scoring, you know, just chipping away at the lead. Next thing you know. We're 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 in the ball game because it got yeah. to a point where I'm like, hey, don't look at the score, man. Let's just play. I, I remember having to say that like several times because that was yeah. the year we were we were always down and playing from behind, and we somehow found, figure out to win. But you get to the points where, hey, don't look at the score. Let's just hoop, and yeah. and that's that's what happened. Yeah, hey, and that's that's how it has to be, man. You know, and that's one of the great things I think about you know playing with KU, man. It's like. No matter how you get down, it may look ugly. And yeah. I think a lot of like fans and people outside of the program, they don't understand this. Like when it looks ugly from outside in, yeah. everybody on the inside, players, coaches, y'all still and we still thinking like we still got a chance to win. Like you said, yeah. we just gotta keep away one play at a time, one play at yep. a time. One stop, one score. Yep. And I think that's just the overall mindset of being a KU basketball player to being in that program. It's just like we don't stop playing until the game is over. Exactly. And, I mean, you, you go a whole season. Every game is not going to be pretty. Like, this is sports. Yeah. Anybody that's in the sports should understand that. Yes. I mean, you go down a list of any kind of sport. For, for instance, the Chiefs this year, they won a lot of ugly games, you know, yeah. like – and who cares? You know, being a fan, hey, we got it done. It was ugly. It done. So, so what? You know, and that that was, uh, and that was a, again my my uh, I want to say my junior year it was like that. We won a lot of ugly games, but yeah, we, we got it done. Winning those ugly games, though, and you said your junior year because it's going to lead into the next question. Winning those ugly games, man, helps prepare you for postseason play. For sure. And, for sure. and now, just kind of rolling into this next this next question. Uh, you know, you played in the national championship game your junior season. Yeah. Could you tell Anthony Davis was going to be an NBA All Star during that game? No. <laughs> Hell no. No, but this guy he he he's come a long way, man. He's having yeah. a hell of a career. Uh, I'm 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 always a fan because I'm a hooper. You know, I, I pay yeah. respect to other guys. And when we played against him in college, as far as offensively, I didn't think he was that great. And when he got to the NBA, he done he done turned to a whole nother, whole nother, a whole nother beast, you know. And got more power and to him. Too. Exactly. And then he's teammates with Marquise, so it's just like I'm I'm a fan, you know. I you always watch you know? all the guys that play at KU, guys I I was teammates with, and yeah, man, I'm I'm just a fan of the sport. And yeah, he's he, this guy, he's changed a whole lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hey, so during your senior senior season, you guys had you guys had a three game losing streak, and I think the Jayhawks had some. I <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> At the beginning of the February, do you remember yeah. how Post Self got you guys out of that slump? How did we get out of that slump? Yeah, 
I would say it had a lot to do with everybody in the locker room. Uh, believe it. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but we did a, a video right before the K State game. It was like a virtual. Um, geez, I can't remember the na- the name of the dance. Anyways, we did like a YouTube. Oh, that big was it? The, uh, we did a locker room. Like yeah, 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 we did a locker room. Yeah, believe yeah, it or yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I okay. think like we just we just in a locker room. We was like, man, we need to just do something to get our mind off of off the of ball just for a second, you know and Justin Wesley, more credit to him. He came in the locker room. He's like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna do this challenge or whatever." And we did it. We killed it. Killed it went viral. It. And hey, hold on. Did you, you have on the? Uh, did you I had on the like the little, uh, onesie? The jacket. I was like doing the. No, I, I think uh, Nico had on the onesie. No, oh, Nico had the onesie on. Yeah, Nico yeah. had the onesie on. Nico had what, the what onesie outfit, on. What outfit did you have on? I had on like some uh, leather, like Ed Hardy jacket or something okay, like that. Yeah. It was yellow <laughs> with stripes. And I was like twirling something. It don't matter, but that I think that moment cha- changed the season. And then with Coach Self agreeing to do it, he was a part of. It. Like he started off the video, yeah. and he was like, "All right, whatever, whatever gets you guys to play better." You know, we like, <laughs> "All right, so we, that 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 relax 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 the team." And we got out there. We played against K State, and just went from there. And just you know that, of course, played in national championship that year. And man, I think the interesting thing about that, Travis, is when you talk about Coach Self, you know, even during that stretch, losing three games, he could easily stick to his old ways and say, hey, hey man, I'll cut that out. Get serious. Yeah. But I think that's so one of the great things about him, man, because he can he he adapts. Like players coach. I mean, he's players like, okay, coach. just like you said, this is gonna get you guys to play better yeah. as a coach. Yeah. All right. Uh, here, I'll participate. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm right. I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do. Get you guys. You you better get out there and play better. We we're like, all right, cool. And then again, the, the video went viral. We went out there and I destroyed K State. And I, yeah. they were pretty good that year too. Yeah, yeah. By the way, and uh, hey man, you read my have... next questions, man? Because you were just hitting right. I mean, you right. You right on track. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we talking about my career. I can go down the list, but hey, yeah. so hey, you hey, you mentioned K State though, so. That year, that same year, you guys beat a good, a good K State, a good yeah, K State team three times yeah. that year. They were good. Yeah, a good K State three times though. You already know, man. Yeah. It's tough to beat a team three times, even yeah. a bad team sometimes three times. Or, or yeah. Team. Yeah. They yeah. were a good team, and you guys beat them three times. Do mm-hmm. you remember how Coach Self? Got, I mean, not sorry. Do you guys? Did that game always mean a little bit more to you guys when you guys played? K-State? Uh, the thing was, we didn't want to lose to another Kansas school, you know? Like, yeah. we all, we run Kansas and everything around it. Uh, but I think going into that game, it was all about toughness because yeah. they were e- equally as talented as we were that year. And our key going into that game, I remember, it, was we got to out-tough them. We got to beat them on the boards. Yeah. And I think after that conversation or those games, I had a double-double that. I think I had, like, 10 or 12 rebounds, you know, 10 plus points that game. And and it was all off of, hey, we got to out tough these guys. We got to get on the board and do all this extra stuff, you know, to win this game. And that's what we did. I mean, anybody listening to this pod, you guys have heard, I mean, Travis has said it multiple times that word tough, that word tough goes a long Long way. way, Everybody got talent. Everybody got talent at this this level. Everybody got talent. Everybody got a guy that can go out there and and get a bucket or two, but you got to have guys that are straight tough, you know, like if they're not scoring, what else are they doing to help the team? Are they yeah. diving on the floor? Are they getting rebounds or, you know, yeah. like stuff like that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's where I played a role because I'm like, all right, so now I can understand early on in the game, like, okay, if I'm not playing good, I'm about to lock this guy down. I'm about to go get eight or nine rebounds, you know, like stuff like that. A few steals if I can. And yeah. That's all, you know, man, that's just all from having a tough the mentality, game. man. It is yeah. the mentality. It's right sure. between your ears, man. Yeah, for sure. Hey, so was there a, was there a way venue that you like to play in most in the Big 12? Uh, what? Say it again. Uh, I said, was there a venue that you like to play most in the Big 12? Oh. Away game. Away, yeah. Uh, let me think. K-State was fun because yeah. the fans always had, yeah. like, yeah. These clever signs. They would do their, their they would do their research on players, find out all of the dirt, have all these like funny signs. Uh K State was fun. Mizzou was only fun because I mean their fans were just the worst. And then being able to like, like 
silenced them the last <laughs> five or six minutes of the game yeah. was like the best That's going. What we look now, forward to right now, there. Oh, the, and mostly at all the places we look for playing on the road because now they can hear us. They doing yeah. all this. Ah, yep. ah. <laughs> the last few minutes of the game, we're like, yo, where you going? Like the game's I'm not going, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all at them, like pointing at the ones who were the loudest and all that. And I, I think as a player, when I was there, we enjoy going to play on the road because yeah. we, we got to look forward to that. Yeah. So what, which fans, whether it's big 12 or any other away game that you had, which fans do you think were the nastiest? The nastiest. My vote goes to, my vote goes to ooh, either K-State or Missouri. K-State. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say Mizzou. I'm going to say Mizzou for sure. Okay. I'm going to say Mizzou. We had an incident when we went down there after T-Rob's mom or whatever yeah. passed. Rest in peace or so. Yeah. Uh, when that happened, they did a moment of silence, and then their fans were like, blurting out stuff and just it just it was it was petty and then we ended up beating them by 20 but yeah, but still true. like I would say uh yeah they probably the nastiest yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's a true hey I mean you know it man it's a true hate man it's a yeah hate, hate, hate us. that's the thing it's I with the say, fans, you don't have though. to just for the players the players don't yeah. hate each other it's always no, no. but we know we're gonna because our fans hate your program we're gonna that go out there and play our so butt we gotta go out there and do we gotta do <laughs> Bro, that's a fact, man, and that's that's what it was. Because a lot of guys on the Mizzou team were guys I I grew up playing yeah. ball with or on the same AAU team. Yeah. Uh, so it just of course it wasn't no hate. I mean, we talked to the guys before and after the game, and it was nothing, you know. But the fans, I mean, you got it. You got to rock. You got to rock with the fans, you know. You to, man. If, if these fans are going crazy like this for us, hey, we're gonna go out there and we gotta bust their butt so they so they can keep being this way, and yeah. I, I think that helps. Hey, so you mentioned a little bit playing overseas uh, last couple years, right since you graduated. Where's been your favorite place to play so far overseas? Oh man, that's tough. I, I played a lot of a lot of cool places. I would say Israel overall because uh, go top three, go top three, go top three. Okay, top top three. I would say Israel, Belgium, and uh, what's the last one? Cyprus, just because it was fun. It was fun there, but. Those are my top three. Israel and Belgium are tied for for one and one and two. Okay. Or, what you like? Two. What you like most about Israel? Israel, just the culture. Uh, mm -hmm. It was warm all year round. I'm from from Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, and we get all four seasons there. You know, winter time, it's 80 degrees. I'm on the beach after practice. You know, so oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's that, right that was this alley right there. Yeah. yeah, that was a different experience <laughs> for me. So I'm like, man, this is life out here. And then my <laughs> My uh my team we won the championship that season, so we were getting more love from the fans and yeah. just the overall experience was was amazing. And then Belgium, just being as being really close to other countries, I thought that was really cool. That on the weekend or any given day, I can hop on a bullet train and go to Paris or Amsterdam yeah. or you know like any Germany, whatever you know. It, it was I, I like that a lot about being in Europe. How was, how'd, you like the, how, how'd you like the food in uh, in Israel? Israel was pretty good. I mean, they're right, you know, right on, right by the sea, and they had yeah. a lot of fresh seafood. And I, I'm oh, a big a fan of seafood guy. And uh, so I, I I loved it, man. I, I had no no issues with it. I mean, I wish Poland, I was a seafood guy, Poland though, I probably would never go back there. <laughs> the, food, <laughs> <laughs> the food was trash, and I I just. That my experience wasn't that wasn't that great, but you I, I played it. You was there because you didn't want to eat. <laughs> oh man, it was just the same stuff every day. And then if it wasn't the same stuff, it tastes all the same. Like it was just like they had one season in, in out there on everything. Oh but, man, yeah. hey, that's when you gotta hit your lifeline. Like, hey man, hey. send me some seasoning, man. They ain't got nothing down oh, here. Oh man, all, all the time I was getting back home, like. At one, at some point in my life, I wanted to tell like my story, my story overseas, man. Like, <laughs> it's that's going to be a lot better than my first book. When when people get to hear like the stuff I saw, I went through as far as like the hey, game, we might have a book coming out soon. The man. travel, I might, I might, we might. So if anybody's I mean, listening, out there, traffic, I, you might need to get on that book, man. Might might have to because I think people, fans, uh. Any hoopers in general need to like know what it's like overseas. I mean, it's 
Hey, it's a lot of glory. Right now, Travis, you might want to come out with that book, bro. Hey, maybe. Somebody, <laughs> hey, it, it, it might be, it might be happening sometimes. <laughs> And well, who knows, man, you know, because obviously, you know, you're going to we know you're going to kill it in the in the medical field. And obviously you're going to have continue to have more doors open up for you. So if you want to if you want to if you want to do that book, man, you know, you're going to have support from Jayhawk Nation. For to sure, get it done. For sure. And they, they hey, will they will get a kick out of all the stuff. Man. It's, it's, you know, they like they love hearing that stuff. They man. love hearing it. And then a lot of people don't come back and talk about it. You know, like I don't yeah. I'm, I don't mind. Like I, I feel like people should know. Like you know, overseas should. is nice, but I mean you got your it's ups and downs over there. It ain't all like as glory as everybody make it out to be. Yeah. You know? it, it was a fun time. I, I enjoyed it. Uh learned a lot of life lessons and met a lot of really cool people friends I will have for life in other countries yeah. that I, I plan to go back and visit. So awesome. there's a lot of pluses for it, but it, the story would be really cool if, if yeah. people can actually well, hear. Hey, well, hey, I'm going to be, hey, I'm going I'm to be in, I'm going to be one of the first ones in line to hear it, Travis, when you're ready. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Let everybody know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, so, all right, Travis, let's go ahead. Hey, we're going to knock out some, uh, some quick fire questions, man. Oh man, so we gotta wrap like up the wrap up the pod, man. So I'm gonna throw them out, man. You just kind of give me whatever answer comes off of your head. I don't like this, but all right, let's go. <laughs> hey, you know I look out for my Jayhawk guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> hey, so do you have a favorite coach self line? Something that he said over and over that you will never ever forget and always remember. Ah, that's a tough one, man. He he got he got a lot of classics. Um, I can't I can't think of one. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna come back to that one. Let's, let's all right, all right. We'll, we'll circle back. back. We'll circle back yeah. on that one. Yeah. All right, hey, who is your who is the teammate from your playing days that you were closest to? Tashan, that was that was yeah. my roommate. That's my guy. We still talk and text to this day. Yeah, Ty, great guy, man. Ty was on. I was on about two pods ago. Great. Yeah, great, 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 my guy, great stories man. too, man. My brother, my brother from another, man. That, that guy. That, that's my guy. Yeah, he's a stud, man. Hey, so if your 2012 team played the 08 championship team or the 2018 Final Four teams, and I asked a lot of players this question, who will win and why? That's tough. I think that 08 and 012 would for sure be the other team. Uh, but I feel like I hate to say it, but the 08 team got they had a, a, a edge on us because they had Sasha. Yeah, <laughs> <Don't know. know. laughs> uh, you're going to list of all the bigs they had, bro. Like all those guys playing the NBA, you got man, like imagine, that team was low. Why do we have bigs like that now? That's we what I'm saying. More like, heavy now. That's a, I feel like that's the only thing missing for like the Kansas traditional team. Like yeah. you can throw any the whole, the whole time I was there, we had four or five bigs. Yeah. On ready, you yeah. know, like they can play ready, like NBA guys sitting on the bench, you know, their first yeah. two years. So I think that's a, a that, we're missing that right now. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can change that around and get a few bigs in the in the program again. But I yeah, yeah, I would I would I would give the edge by by a point. To to oh eight to the oh eight team <laughs> five point just a point five, five point maybe all right you know I mean? let me guess Mario hitting the last second shot probably exactly not. Mario of course <laughs> you write the story up Mario hit the the game winner we're we're up two and he hit a you know he hit a three to <laughs> to, to send it to to, to to put out the game hey yeah, so exactly. would KU have won the national championship last year if COVID wouldn't have shut down the tournament. I think we would have had a really good chance, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, if you could have played with one player that played with uh, played at KU before and after your time, who would it be, and why? Uh, Keith Langford, because again, that okay. was one of my. Ooh, guys. hey, y'all two yeah. on the same court slashing. That's what I'm saying. Ooh. I can't imagine me on one wing, him on the other. You know, like ooh. The, that's the, all the, I'm gonna the, say is ooh. Your strategy, trying to like. Figure out who to stop that game. That would uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, after judge. that, I would say judge. I would say after I would say uh Devontae, man. He had a he had a lot yeah. of personality yeah. on and off the court. And I think that helped out that team that year with yeah. the way he was as a player. That's great picks. That's great picks. So if you could have played last one for you, Trav, 
If you could have played for one coach in the Big 12 that wasn't Coach Self, oh, who would it tough, be? Man. I can't see me. I can't see anybody else yelling at me because me out all the time. But uh that's tough. Let me think. I would say uh Huggins. But yeah, Huggins over at uh West Virginia. Yeah, West oh, man, I love Huggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can play for Huggy he's too. So, he's so chill, laid back, wearing a yeah. jumpsuit every game. Like that's yeah. He he seemed really cool. He gets chill, those guys. Back. That's like, hey, that's that's Travis. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's Travis right there, man. Alley, <laughs> for sure. Hey, so hey, I'm a, hey. Last one. I'm gonna circle back to that last one. I'm gonna tell you mine. My what? favorite coach self line, and it sticks with me. And I'll still be saying this to my players. <laughs> Yeah. High school player. Uh-huh. Water off your back. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would he would tell me a lot, like, or he'd make like statements like, I don't know what it is about you, but you never remember to play before. Like you can run through the wall or make an air ball off the other side of the rim. You're gonna come back and shoot it as if you on fire. And it was like, man, that's I, I do appreciate that about you. He used to always tell me that. So Hey, there we go. That's something good, man. Well, <laughs> well that's it for today, Jayhawk Nation. Thanks for tuning in to Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Hey, thanks for having me. Jayhawk, a podcast brought to you by the Field of 68 Media Network. Make sure you rate five stars, review, and hit the subscribe button on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcast from. Travis, appreciate you, man. Good luck in hey, the middle of the field. Thank uh, you. And you already know, brother. That, yeah, we, that weather's starting out. to get a little bit warmer, so we're going to yeah, be out there on these links. We're getting, out, we're getting out this summer for sure. For you sure. Bet, man. Well, Travis, appreciate for you, brother. Sure. I'll, you, I'll see you soon, man. Stay safe, man.